Baldur's Gate 3's mod manager that was introduced in patch 7 does have some issues which I'll be addressing in this video and I want to talk you through how to correct some of these issues because I've been getting a lot of comments on my videos regarding these things which are a little bit frustrating but I'll be going over how to fix them all so one of the main ones is that you can uh, remove a mod and have it come back into your game no matter what you do it sticks into the game so uh, let's say we saved here and we have 50 some mods in our game and we go back to the main menu and then you want to remove them if you have a save file of those mods in the game even if you remove them they're going to keep coming back from the grave and continually find their way into your mod manager now this is one that was frustrating me for a while as someone who tests out a bunch of different mods if you have a save file in your game that has one of these it's going to appear again so for example like i deleted the celestial warlock mod and because uh, there's two of them if we look back down at the very bottom here, we had the Celestial Warlock mod again. So I removed it. It's not enabled, but it just brought itself back. So it's installed again. Now, the reason for this is because when you go to continue a game, you do have a, I do have a save file that has this mod in it. So if you see here, uh, they'll say third party mods enabled. So with that, you do have to delete that save file. So that's why it's important to back up your saves and make a copy of your saves before modding. Uh, so save, and back up this one here. I do have a guide on how to do that because if I were to delete this mod or if I was able to delete this save file and they go back loading into the game and uninstall this or unsubscribe from this one, it's going to disappear altogether. So we don't have to deal with it anymore. So that is one of the more annoying ones because I had uninstalled like 20 mods and they kept creeping their way back into my game. And that's obviously not ideal if you want to get rid of some mods that may be bothering you or giving you some issues with other things. So delete the save files and you'll get rid of them. Now you can see here I have some that don't have any images there. This means that I was installing them from Nexus mods using the Baldur's Gate 3 external mod manager, which actually does work well with this one. If you're having any issues with these mods, it just works best to use the external mod manager and delete them from there, save it, and then export it into your game file. Uh, but I'll be doing a future guide on how to use the external mod Baldur's Gate 3 mod manager if you want to use Nexus mods. But another one that's really uh, bothering some people is you can see here we have 31 pages of mods. Now, if you go up to like 7 and then you get to the 9 there, and if you want to continue going even further, it actually resets you back to 1. So that's obviously not ideal because we want to, you know, look at, if you want to look at all the mods, it's not possible. If you go to 10, it resets you back to 1. Now, I do feel like they will come up with a fix for this eventually. Um, it just may take some time because this is so new and there's a lot going on with it. But the way that I found that works well, if you want to kind of overcome that and look at all the mods, it is kind of a, I mean, it is just using this here. So we go on the search filters and then if you want to just look for cheats, typically they're not going to go past nine. And I, <laughs> this one already has seven, but cheats is going to be the one of the more popular ones. Like the classes only has five here, but the unfortunate thing is it does reset once you get into double digits. And uh, I do feel like that will come with a fix at some point here uh, because some of these are starting to add up. Now, a couple things that I found work really well, as you can see here, the mod manager fixes. So this is made by Kate. She's done, or he or she has done a ton of different great mods for this. So um, this one does fix a lot of the issues that comes with it. So I always have this one enabled because it just has some, as they say, there are inconsistencies in the mod manager and this helps correct those. So that one works really well. And then the mod manager fixes and tweaks also does that. So this helps out with uh, fixing the preview screens because uh, some of them won't show the previews and uh, gives you a load order button as well. So you can go, whenever you're in your mods here, you can move the load order up or down. So that's nice because some mods do require you to install them in a certain way, which is the next point. If you're having issues with your mods, some of them do require you to have mods in a certain placement. So for this one here, I have the community library. This is a collection of data for use in Baldur's Gate 3 mods. This is an external mod. Uh, as you can see there, it doesn't have an image and it's trying to load it. The thing with the community library is this one always has to be load order one. Now, and the nice thing about the mods in Baldur's Gate 3 here, these don't require any mod load order unless you start externally downloading mods. And that's where this starts to get a little bit of an issue. So you can see I have 1.6 gigabytes of mods downloaded. The community library there has to be always the first mod. There's a few little tweaks that you have to have for some of these. I like to go with all like the uh, dyes and like cosmetic ones as early on as I can. Doesn't make a huge difference, but I tr do try to keep them all together. Another thing, when you have classes, 
So you can see the ones with the images like the Witch and the Nightingale. These are ones that are built into the mod manager itself. But you can see all these 5e e quests or classes like the Fighter Samurai, Way of the Long Death Monk, uh, Psy Warrior Fighter, Astral Self Monk. They have to be before your compatibility framework. So if you're using mods with the compatibility framework, you have to have your sub you have to have your classes above the compatibility framework but below the community library so it has to load this one in first it'll load in your classes next and then finally it'll load that in so that is the correct order for that some other ones will have mod order load requirements so just be mindful of that but you can see there i have the warlock celestial here below my compatibility framework for some reason the mods that are built into mod io and the baldur's gate 3 mod manager themselves doesn't matter it's just the external downloaded ones that really do matter so you can move these around but as you as you can see here this one keeps coming back from the grave and if you have a ton of mods that you just want to delete you're going to have to delete your save file if you saved while you had the mods you do have to do that to get rid of them so there is a ton of really great mods here and i do think that there's going to be some fixes that helps address some of these issues here uh, some other things that you may run into some mods will have some compatibility issues between each other so uh, if we were to download the Shadow Heart animation swap so that uh, we change the animations of Shadow Heart, and then we take any others that may impact some similar lines of code, you may start to notice some issues when you get back into the game. So if you have any issues with those, I would recommend the best thing for testing out mods is adding a few at a time. So this prevents you from getting an issue like that. Like, again, if we take one of these mods and one of those mods, and they both interact with each other, it's going to bring up some issues. So my general tip to you is whenever you're installing mods that you want to try out, do like two or three at a time, install them, load into your game. I wouldn't save either because you never know. Some other issues may pop up with those mods. Try out three or four, check your basics, go to camp, leave camp, walk around, maybe even get into combat too if you're using any type of combat mods or anything that's going to impact like, for example, Better Hotbar 2. This is a very popular mod. If you go and look at this one, it has a ton of downloads. 92,000 people have the Better Hotbar downloaded. One little thing, it doesn't allow you to reapply Witch Bolt, um, Hunter's Mark, or Hex, or any of those things that you can reapply. So that is one of the things with it, these mods is they're not perfect. So the best tip is to actually go into it, try these mods out. If you think it works, then save with it. You can always run back to a previous save because it's better safe than sorry. Because if you have one of these that actually impacts your playthrough greatly and it doesn't, if you can't remove it, um, it's going to obviously cause some issues. Although you can continue playing after removing some mods like... When I go to load into my game here, it's giving me these mod issues detected. So this one says it must be enabled. That is the mod there that I said I was trying to remove. So I deleted this and it keeps coming back from the dead because I had that save file with it. So I'd have to delete my save file to remove this from prompting because the game has this mod at loaded into that save and it's causing some issues. Um, it also notices that I have some third party mods, which is fine. Whenever this pops up, most times it's not going to cause any issues it does say it could cause some compatibility or instability issues during gameplay that could happen depending on the the level of mod that you're using i had to remove the celestial warlock and i wasn't using this mod again i didn't have a class with this in my playthrough so it didn't cause any issues but again if you want to remove mods you have to delete them delete the save and then you're good so yeah, when you're testing mods, test a few at a time, make sure they're all compatible and they don't cause any issues, and make sure that you want to have these mods long term, because once they're in your save, it's a little bit hard without going to a backup of save to have it to, compat to work compatible perfectly. So, if you have any questions regarding mods, I will do my best to answer them in the comments. I've had a lot of questions about these particular issues in in particular and i was able to answer them in the comments but i still keep getting comments like this so i want to make this guy just to kind of walk you through some steps in order to make the best experience of modding in baldur's gate 3 so yeah if you have any questions fire them down in the comments i'll try to get back to them as quickly as possible if you found the video useful hit that subscribe button below it helps out my channel i really do appreciate it i hope you have a great day and i'll see you all in the next video